Hello everyone. This morning Ms. Higgins did a read aloud of Rose Blanche by Roberto Innocenti. Today we're going to move on to do a reading workshop lesson on historical fiction. Today our teaching point is readers of historical fiction pay attention to the setting. We do this by first identifying the setting, time and place, by asking what clues is the author giving me that suggests what kind of place this is? And by asking, how does the author describe what this place looks like? How do they create a feeling or mood? Our academic vocabulary today will be setting, mood, and plot. We know that setting is a time and a place where the story is taking place. Mood is the feeling that we get from reading the text. And plot is just what is happening in the text. What's the problem? Who are the characters? And what's going on? The content vocabulary for today's lesson is Holocaust and concentration camp. What we're trying to achieve in this lesson is we are going to get started on our historical fiction unit. We are going to analyze the setting and the mood of the text as we begin reading a historical fiction text. So let's just remind ourselves that a historical fiction text is a fictional story that takes place in a particular time period in the past. So it's a real time period in history. Often the setting is real, but the characters are made up from the author's imagination, using clues and using real facts from history. Today I'm going to model looking at a specific scene in Rose Blanche. I'm going to be identifying the setting, the time and place. I am going to ask myself what clues is the author giving me that suggests what kind of place this is. And I'm going to ask, how does the author describe what this place looks like? How does, how did the author create a mood? Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to open up Rose Blanche. Okay. We are up to the part where a young boy just ran out of the back of a truck. And here he is, and here's the mayor. Uh, and here's Rose Blanche. I'm going to reread this page over again. He grabbed the little boy by the collar and brought him back to the truck. Then he smiled at the soldiers without speaking, and they thanked him. Of course, they're talking about the mayor here. He grabbed the young boy. He's bringing him back to the soldier. The sky was gray. So now I want to ask myself, well, let's identify the setting. Earlier in Ms. Higgins' text, uh, read aloud, she explained to you guys that this is taking place during World War II, during Nazi Germany. And we get some symbols here, some clues that the author is giving us. The mayor's wearing this um, Nazi symbol here. We're getting some clues as to who is in the setting. We get a soldier, and the soldier is using a gun. So we know this is taking place during wartime. We know that the setting is a small town in Germany and it's during wartime. Okay, now let's go back and let's think about the second thing we want to find out. So we identify the time and the place. Now we want to ask what clues is the author giving me that suggests what kind of place this is? Well, first of all, just from looking at the image here, it seems like the kind of place that you don't want to be in pretty violent. The soldier is grabbing the child and the text tells us, let's go back to the text so we can find text evidence. The text says that he grabbed the little boy by the collar and brought him back to the truck. So he didn't just bring him over, he's grabbing him. So it's a pretty violent way of doing that. So we're getting some clues from character actions of the type of places this is. It's not a friendly place. He's smiling at the soldiers when he's bringing this child back and they're thanking him. That's kind of making me think, okay, if this is the mayor and he's somebody in charge, I know that mayors usually try to do the right thing, but right now, definitely not doing the right thing. Bringing the child back, the child has the hands up, again, character actions, 
he's kind of looking, I'm looking at his face right now, and he's kind of looking a little bit like, what's going on? Confused. Hands are up. He knows he's in trouble. And now I'm looking at just the body language and the actions of the soldier. He's grabbing him, and the gun is right in his hand. So it seems like a pretty violent place to be in. Okay, let's go back and let's look at the next question we're going to work on answering. How does the author describe what this place looks like and how do they create a feeling or mood? So the author also describes what the setting looks like by including some details here. The sky was gray. If something is gray, I know that it's probably pretty sad and, and almost like hinting at us that something is going to happen, something bad is going to happen. It's definitely a negative mood, a scary mood, suspicious mood that we're getting here. Now it's your turn. I'm going to be showing you a different page in Rose Blanche. And when we get there, I want you to think, what clues is the author giving us that suggests what kind of place this is? I want you to ask, how does the author describe what this place looks like? And how do they create a mood? So let's go back to Rose Blanche. And this time, we are going to skip over to the part where she has found the children in the concentration camp right here. So we already know where this is taking place. So we just want to find the clues that the author is giving us that let us know what kind of place this is. And we also want to think about what mood is the author creating. So I'm going to read the page over and you're going to stop and think. They all stood in front of long wooden houses. The sun was setting behind the hills. It was windy, and I was cold. Because this is a picture book, you will also use text evidence from the visual here. So go ahead, stop and think. What clues is the author giving us that suggest the type of place this is, and what mood is the author creating? If you were able to pick up on just the way that these people look, they kind of all look the same, wearing the striped uniform that they seem to be in. Seems like they don't have any hair on them. Some of them have their faces covered. And they're all just staring out at Rose Blanche. We can get some clues that this seems like a pretty scary place to be in. Almost like they have no hope. They seem a little bit hopeless behind these bars. And if you were able to describe that the author includes language such as the sun was setting behind the hills. So the sun is setting, we know something dark is coming. If you mention something about the wind and how it feels cold there, those are old examples of text evidence that you can use to describe this mood. We are definitely getting a very depressing mood from this page. I want to remind you again that readers of historical fiction pay attention to the setting by first identifying the setting, the time and the place, by asking what clues is the author giving me that suggests what kind of place this is, by asking how does the author describe what this place looks like? How do they create a feeling or a mood? Now you are going to begin reading The Whispering Town by Jennifer Elfgren. As you read, you're going to follow our teaching point. You're going to find the setting. You're going to ask what clues is the author giving me that suggests what kind of place this is. You're going to ask how does the author describe what this place looks like? How do they create a feeling or mood? Then you will complete a stop and jot to answer these questions on a Google Doc. Click Submit, and your teacher will be able to get back, with you, get back to you with feedback. Good luck, everybody.